You're watching Unrelent Gaming. This is Beerus, the God of Destruction. Make sure you subscribe to Unrelent Gaming and push the like button for me, or else I'll hakai you from existence. Oh, and do make sure to watch the entire video all the way through. And to follow Unrelent Gaming on both Instagram and Twitter. Whis, enough. On to the video. With Dragon Ball Super manga chapter number 68 now officially in the history books, the story of Granola the Survivor is now officially underway as Granola seeks to recover under the orders of a mission that he was sent on to obtain the remains of OG-73 and with Granola's sight set in completing his mission, what sinister motives can Granola be up to with the assistance of Oatmeal by his side, what purpose will OG-73 serve after he is recovered, and what does this mean for our heroes now that Granola is slowly beginning to make his move. As once more before we begin, if you are new to this channel and have a love and passion for all things Dragon Ball and anime related, then make sure to go on ahead and smash that subscribe button and turn on all notifications by clicking on the bell icon to never miss a single upload on this channel, as well as giving this video a big thumbs up by smashing that like button down below if you guys are loving the direction of the Dragon Ball Super manga and cannot wait to see this be animated within the actual anime itself. And if of course you guys want to catch up and check out all all the best from the Dragon Ball Super manga, then you guys can go on ahead and check out the official Dragon Ball Super manga playlist located down in the description box below to where there you guys will be able to find all the latest and best from the actual Dragon Ball Super manga. So if you want to catch up and find out more information on what's been going on, then be sure to go on ahead and check out that playlist located down below. As we kick off Dragon Ball Super manga chapter number 68 entitled Granola the Survivor, as we make our way back into the past on the Cerulean planet which of course we observe how Frieza and his army had overtaken and destroyed the entire city along with its populace, there are dozens of bodies having to be found laying on the streets, hanging from walls, and this is all courtesy of Frieza and his invasion on this planet in further using the influence of the Saiyans to completely exterminate the serial people. And as as we then get to see the outline and silhouette of the giant great ape stomping around, there is an individual presumably being Granola having to be shown running inside of a building, and as this individual is further shown running for his life in his attempts of finding safety, he winds up stumbling into this building and noticing a giant hole having to be shown up in the ceiling. As this individual who is presumably Granola looks up, he then notices how there is something stomping its way towards him, and once this monster ends up making way into finally showing its face, it's a giant great ape which of course according to the scar on his face could be looked at and presumed to be Bardock stares right at Granola as only then Granola wakes up from this nightmare and Granola is utterly terrified because he didn't know that initially he still had these dreams or why he was even dreaming of these things to begin with because he hadn't done so in quite some time and with Granola having to be shown stumbling around in his ship, Oatmeal picked up that there was something wrong with Granola as he went on to ask, what's wrong Granola? Was it that dream again? Yeah, says Granola. Worry not, says Oatmeal. OG73I is in stable condition. Good. Is anyone following us, says Granola, with Oatmeal responding, after the destruction you brought down upon them? No. Stolen! Again, says Goichi, as of course he notices how OG-73 was taken from his ship, Oatmeal further went on to add, it will be quite a while before we reach the heater's base. I suggest a cold sleep, with Granola responding, no. I'm wide awake now. Do you still despise Frieza's army, says Oatmeal? Sure do. Frieza died several years ago, Oatmeal adds, and the remnants of his army are but a shadow of their former glory, yes? That's what they say, Granola adds. Then why obsess, Oatmeal goes on to ask Granola. Try to move on already. I guess I should. First off, it was the barbarous apes with Frieza's army who slaughtered my fellow Cerulean's. And even those apes were apparently wiped out by a massive meteor not long after. I've lost both of my avenues for my revenge, but that doesn't explain why that dream still haunts my sleep. 
Barbarous apes, you say, Oatmeal asks. Are you referring to the Saiyans? That's right, says Granola, as we then go back to Beerus' planet and having to notice how Goku is desperately trying to do everything he can to grab onto the Oracle Fish only because there is a mission here, and that mission is to put the Oracle Fish to sleep. As, of course, Goku's finally able to catch him, that's when the Oracle Fish went on to shout, Cut it out! Unhand me, Barbarian! With Goku telling the fish, Come on! Stop squirming! Or else I'll splat ya, grill ya, and gobble ya up, says Goku. Do it now, Whis! And with Whis having to touch down from a nearby tree, that's when Whis ends up, ironically enough, pulling out a syringe and telling Goku, but of course, as they then end up injecting the fish, which, ironically enough, seemingly looks as if during modern times they're giving the fish the vaccine, as soon as the oracle fish winds up getting his shot, they then plop him back in his little bowl, as of course the oracle fish then goes to sleep. And that's when Whis goes on to add, a healthy dose of vitamins is the best solution for insomnia. That fish gets insomnia, Vegeta asks? Really? Indeed. Once in a great while, Whis adds. It keeps floating while it's asleep, Goku asks? Fun fact, the oracle fish suffering from lack of sleep is a bad omen for the future. What? Vegeta says. Or sometimes it's nothing, Whis adds. Aw, you got my hopes up that some really strong fighter was about to crash the party. Will you ever learn your lesson, Vegeta adds, and Beerus ends up catching wind of this, as of course he's also annoyed, he touches back down and having to shout, Hey Goku! Don't give me that I wanna fight someone strong crap, you always wind up in over your head, and then somehow screw me over too. Uh, did something happen, Goku says? Yes, very much so, Whis adds, and Beerus is really frustrated as, of course, Whis then redirects his focus to Goku with Goku doing the same. That's when Goku goes on to ask, should we get back to it, Whis? Let's. And with Goku shown closing his eyes, he ends up doing the exact same thing that he had done in the moral arc, and that's jump from his base form right into the mastered ability of Ultra Instinct, and with mastered Ultra Instinct Goku having to look on, Beerus is utterly quiet as he also wants to observe this, and Vegeta is visibly annoyed, as of course both Whis and Goku get into fighting position, Whis then goes into his Wing Chun position as he goes on to tell Goku, ready when you are. And as soon as Mastered Ultra Instinct Goku gets into fighting position, the first thing he ends up doing is Goku ends up dashing directly up at the sky with Whis having to look up, but mind you, Whis isn't showing any signs of concern because of course it is Whis, and with Goku having to look down in this really special spectacular shot of Beerus' entire planet below, Goku further goes on to create several after-image clones that descend right down upon Whis and having to surround him, and as they do, Whis is showing no signs of concern, but instead, he is heavily focused and seemingly very sharp in paying attention very closely in what's going on, and as soon as Goku's after-image clones move on in, that's when Whis goes on to make his move by attacking the clones, and Whis does this with such precision and with such finesse that it almost makes it seem as though Whis isn't even trying, because he's not, and there's a good enough reason for this. So Whis further goes on to demonstrate to Goku, improving to him on where he stands on the totem pole of hierarchy, because as soon as he goes on to destroy each and every single one of these clones by himself, he then goes on to notice how one of the after-image clones is descending down upon him from above, and with Whis looking up, with such finesse, Whis ends up charging directly up at the after-image clone, and what Whis ends up doing is he doesn't even bother to touch, kick, punch, or do anything to the Shadow Clone because as soon as he makes his way right through it head first, Whis ends up getting right in the face of the original Goku with Goku having to be absolutely puzzled that Whis had done this, and as he does, Whis went along to further tell Goku, your real body never descended. An obvious ploy, and with Goku taken back, that's when Whis ends up kicking Goku and one-shotting him down onto the ground, and as he does, Goku hits the ground with such force that it knocks him out of Mastered Ultra Instinct and reverts him right back down to his base form. And with Whis so casually touching down, he then goes on to tell Goku, copying me won't get you far. You must develop your own style. Dang, Goku says. I was sure that would work, and that's when he ends up once again jumping back into Mastered Ultra Instinct and attacking Whis, and with of course Beerus and Vegeta observing, that's when Vegeta went along to question by asking, is Whis using Ultra Instinct at the moment? Not exactly, Beerus adds. Angels are always in the Ultra Instinct state. I see, Vegeta adds, as he further goes on to observe the fight with Goku and Whis, it's interesting to see how Goku, despite both how fast, how powerful, and how agile Goku had become, 
every single time he seems to be throwing punch after punch after punch, Whis is very casually just deflecting all of it by telling Goku, you may already be aware of this, but the ability to wield Ultra Instinct is not, and in and of itself, your ultimate goal. As he goes on to completely dodge Goku's punch, he winds up grabbing Goku's wrist, positioning himself forward, and then follows up by flipping Goku directly into the water ahead, and as Goku is flipped into the water, Whis goes on to add, in fact, it's only the starting point. As Goku of course re-emerges, he charges right back in as of course he goes on the attack. Whis then continues, I have greater command over Ultra Instinct than Maris. And in turn, the Grand Priest's Ultra Instinct is even more accurate than my own. Meaning that I'm at the bottom of the ladder, says Goku? What I meant to say is that you have at least that much room to train and grow. Doesn't that excite you and with the two having to break away, Goku goes on to add, yeah. I'm stoked to get even stronger, and as they continue to fight, Beerus goes on to ask Vegeta, You're not gonna try to master it too? It doesn't suit me, says Vegeta. Didn't think so, Beerus says, as Vegeta continues, I'll surpass Kakarot in another way. Oh yeah, Beerus says? It might be possible, but that's up to you. Cause Ultra Instinct ain't the only technique of the gods. What? Vegeta says. That's just the angel specialty. Or did you really think that us gods of destruction would really run around using a move where we gotta keep our heart all calm and tranquil? Uh, then then wh what do you use? Uh, tell me of this technique you gods of destruction use. I'll pass, Beerus says. Training people ain't in my job description. Anyway, I'm gonna go exercise to wake myself up. And with Beerus so casually looking back, he then adds, if you see anything you want, Feel free to steal it. And with Beerus walking up a flight of stairs, that's when Vegeta follows by telling him, Wait for me, Lord Beerus! Because Beerus is insinuating that angels have Ultra Instinct, and that they're doing their own thing by always remaining calm and tranquil, but the gods of destruction have their own unique set of abilities and skills that make them unique as, of course, being gods of destruction. As meanwhile, Granola is shown having to approach a nearby asteroid that just so happens to have a castle or a fortress on top of it, and as we get to see how Granola is reeling in OG-73 in this container, the doors finally open up, and as they do, we get to see how one individual steps out as he goes on to ask, Tch, pocket change, really? What a cruddy haul. Hey, if it ain't my good buddy Granola, how's it hanging? But Granola is awkwardly quiet as Sushiro goes on to add, Whoa, ain't that the artificial life form thing that Alex been asking for? Uh, how the hell did you nab it? But again, Granola is not answering as Sushiro then continues, I mean, wow, great job. What do you say we uh, pretend we snag this guy together and split the prize? The guy I just handed over doesn't make much for a bounty, he continues. Come on, please. We've known each other forever, but that's when Granola went on to stick his hand out in the form of that of a gun in telling Sushiro, don't touch Sushiro, or Alec will be paying me for your head as well. And that's when Sushiro backs up by telling Granola, just joking pal, sheesh. And with Granola pulling back, he then enters the place as Sushiro adds, get in there and get paid. Then drinks are on you, okay? And as soon as Granola then walks in, he is then met by the leader known as Elect and his underlings as Elect goes on to tell Granola, Granola, we can always count on you, huh? This guy kind of looks like me when I had long hair. As of course, we then get to see how his underlings or his henchmen are all surrounding the area, of course, resembling that of Bojack's men, as he then goes on to tell Granola, well, let's see it. And with Granola reeling him in, I'm getting heavy Mandalorian vibes as of course Granola does this. Alec goes on to add, oh, is this what I think it is? Confirm it, Oil. Okay. As Oil then approaches, he then checks with the scanner and telling Alec, yep, that's the real one, OG73I. Well done, says Alec. Really? Great job, with Granola telling him, my money. Now. Sure thing, Alec says. Mackie. Give our friend his reward. Yeah, says Mackie, which of course Mackie is the girl. She then goes on to hand on over, which again, this currency is eerily enough very similar to the currency that Frieza had given Shile and Lemma once of course they found Broly and Paragus on Planet Vampa. So a little tidbit to add there. So of course, once Granola takes his currency, that's when he goes on to ask, 
What are you using that thing for, Alec? You're gonna create a goon squad like Gochi was doing? <laughs> Alec says. We've got no need for troops. We heaters ain't running an army here. And if the day ever comes where we do need more muscle, then we'll hire the best that money can buy. With enough cash to burn, there's nothing you can't have in this universe. Money, says Granola. Right. I guess that's true. As Alec adds, dominating others with military might is a relic of the past. These days, power comes in the form of money and intel. Which is true. Intel, says Granola. Am I wrong, Alec adds? The one with the most intel controls the universe. And intel is exactly what's packed inside this thing. As of course he points to 7-3, that's when Granola adds right. Well, I don't know much about that, but I've got my reward, and that's what matters. What's the next job? As Alec tells him, about that. The state of things in the universe are shifting, so we don't got any assignments at the moment. What? Frieza's been revived, says Alec. What did you say, Granola says? He's, he's come back to life? H how? No clue, Alec adds. Doesn't matter how, it happened and it's bad for business. When people are running scared, they ain't fired up to making deals. Right now, right now I could actually kill him, says Granola. A chance to avenge my people. Where, where is he? You have to tell me. Why, says Alec, revenge? Don't even try it, Granola. Frieza's back and somehow stronger than ever. So you'd be playing with fire. Probably wouldn't stand the chance. Let me be the judge of that, says Granola. Tell me, where is Frieza? But then, Alec's underling Gas goes on to knee Granola from behind, and with Granola taken back, that's when Gas winds up kind of hurrah-karaning Granola right off the steps on down to the floor, and as Granola hits the floor, I absolutely love how Gas just holds Granola down in this armbar-like position because he's kind of putting Granola in his place to reassure and remind him never to step up to Alec like that again, and with Alec having to observe, that's when he went on to add, You're such a hothead, Granola. I know all about your little grudge against Frieza's army, but proper revenge is best served cold. It takes time and planning, so chill out. Put this whole thing on the back burner until we're ready to help you out. Frieza's army is a thorn to our side too. You feel me? I yeah. Got it, says Granola. Great. Let him go, Gas. And as soon as Gas retreats back to Mackie, Granola stands back up as Alec adds, Glad we have an understanding. Go home and take some time to cool that head. Okay. Contact me if there's a job to do. See ya, Mackie says. And with Granola walking away, you can clearly feel the tension in the atmosphere as, of course, Oatmeal goes on to contact him. That's when he went on to ask, Care to explain yourself, Granola? It's quite unlike you to allow Alec to have the last word. That piece of garbage Frieza, Granola says, will die by my hand. I will have my revenge. As Oatmeal goes on to comment, that's all well and good, but remain calm. Why not treat yourself with your earnings first? And with Granola shown taking off, that's when Mackie goes on to add, hearing Frieza's name seriously lit a fire under Granola. He's really got it out for that guy, as Oil goes on to add, Hey Alec, why did you go and mention Frieza? With Alec responding, Our friend Granola has gotten crazy strong, and the power's gotten to his head. We'd be in hot water if he ever got stronger than you, Gas. He could never defeat me, says Gas. Darn right, Alec adds. You're the pride and joy of our little family. Stronger than Gas, Mackie adds even. Not possible. Yeah. It's unlikely, Alec adds. Hedging risks is the rule of business. So you see, Frieza's gonna ice the guy for us. So that's your angle, says Mackie. No rush, of course. Right now, I'm just fired up to see what we can find inside that thing. I'll start running the analysis, Oil says. Soon, we'll have what we need. The exact location of Zuno. The ultimate intel broker. And with Granola's ship shown flying in space, that's when Oatmeal goes on to tell Granola, Rest up. It'll take two days to reach planet Sorel. Yeah, I hear you. But then, Granola's ship is attacked by seemingly enough a number of ships, as of course he goes on to ask what was that, he then turns to find that Sushiro is in fact after him. As Sushiro went along to add, Hand over that bounty, Granola, or you'll be space dust. It's Sushiru, 
Ah, he's gathered his allies. Damn it, this is an ambush. That lowlife. We'll settle down on this asteroid, says Granola. And as he does, Sushiro quickly follows, as of course his minions and his ships land on the asteroid itself. They end up coming out with swords drawn, guns drawn, as Sushiro goes on to tell Granola, nowhere to run, pal. Give up the cash and nobody has to get hurt. Sure thing. How about I give you half of my earnings, says Granola, and we walk away. That's mighty cooperative of you, says Sushiro. You should have just agreed to that from the start. As Granola adds, come inside and I'll give it to you. Let's go, Sushiro says. And as they enter the ship, they all go on to try to look for Granola inside as they go on to ask, where is he? Where did he go? Up here, in the cockpit. As they then go up to the cockpit, that's when Sushiro adds, you're sure you're making us work for it? Now show us the money! As they only then find out that Granola had left one of his headpieces on the chair of the cockpit, as Oatmeal goes on to add, too bad that that wasn't my voice. Huh? It's a trap because that's exactly what it was, and from the outside we get to see how all of Sushiro's allies and all of his men are just getting dropped. They're getting shot from all different angles, as of course, they're dropping dead all around the ship. That's when Sushiro adds, he, he can snipe without his goggles? He doesn't require my support, says Oatmeal, to snipe the likes of you. Sorellian's right eyes are a specialty adapted to sniping, and Granola's abilities are cut above the rest. So of course it looks as though the Sorellian's right eye has a feature that allows them to become better snipers, and we get to see this as of course Granola is standing on top of a cliff while holding his eye out and of course aiming right towards Sushiro, that's when Oatmeal adds, no stun gun for you. His next shot will pierce your heart. Get it? Uh, got it. I give up. I'm sorry. Uh, you'll forgive me then, yeah? I'll, I'll even leave you my pocket change. And that's when Sushiro ends up taking his ship and leaving, with Granola putting on the headpiece. He then went on to sit back down as Oatmeal added, A profitable encounter. How nice. I suppose so, Granola says. Your sniping was impressive as ever, Oatmeal goes on to tell him. Nah, I missed one of the targets. Did you? Well, in that case, good enough. Not in my book, Granola adds. Alec was right. I'm still not powerful enough to take down Frieza. To avenge the Sorellians I've lost. I'll have to grow even stronger than anyone. And as we then go back to Beerus' planet and overseeing the Oracle Fish, the Oracle Fish is sleeping, but in his sleep, he went on to mumble, Universe 7, balance shifting, strongest warrior in the universe will soon rise up, as only then, Dragon Ball Super Manga Chapter number 68 then comes to a close. Now, we now have a better understanding as to where Granola stands in terms of his overall motives and the position that he's in in the idea that he desperately wants to get back at the Saiyans for destroying his race, but at the same time he knows that the person that had orchestrated this attack on the Sorellian race was in fact Frieza, so this goes on to beg the question as to who Granola is going to go off to target first, is he going to target the Saiyans in learning of their existence, or is he simply going to target the main source of the attack, that being Frieza, in going after him as a direct response? So, in the comment section below, I want to go ahead and get your thoughts on three specific things. Number one, on a scale of one to five, with one being absolute trash and five being absolutely brilliant, what would be your ranking for Dragon Ball Super Manga Chapter number 68 from a scale of one to five? Number two, what do you think Granola is going to be doing first in his pursuit to to not only get stronger, but also execute his revenge on both Frieza and the Saiyans. Is he going to go after Frieza first, or is he actually somehow going to find the Saiyans courtesy of Oatmeal and target them first as an end result? And lastly, what do you guys think this new ability or this new power is that Beerus is foreshadowing because it's kind of weird to see that Beerus is insinuating that there is a counter to Ultra Instinct or at least something that Vegeta could learn that could upscale him to match Goku to that extent if that is surely enough possible because I don't see Vegeta surpassing Mastered Ultra Instinct Goku not unless somehow Vegeta himself obtains Ultra Instinct which of course according to his own self-proclamation he doesn't want to do that right so if Vegeta doesn't want to follow in the footsteps of Goku, if Vegeta doesn't want to follow in the footsteps of Whis in having a calm heart and finding his means of coping with himself and making his body and mind into one, 
synchronizing it and mastering the ability of self-awareness and self-movement, then what could Vegeta possibly do that's going to put him roughly above Goku if it's not going to be Ultra Instinct? So, I don't like this cop-out only because it kind of insinuates the idea that Beerus kind of already knows of a counter to Ultra Instinct, whether that be a power or whether that be an ability, but what I really do like is the fact that even Goku now is acknowledged in being a very, very skillful and powerful warrior, but compared to Whis and the other residing 11 attendees, Goku is at the very, very bottom, which is good because you don't want to have Goku surpass Whis, you don't want to have Goku surpass the other 11 angels, and surely enough, you don't want Goku to surpass the Grand Priest because the Grand Priest right now is even confirmed by Whis to be at such a tier that nobody can compete with him. So, in the comment section below, I want to get your thoughts on this manga chapter, and I want to get your thoughts on the overall idea surrounding the Heater Clan, what you guys perhaps think they're going to be about. Of course, I'm also getting kind of similar BoJack vibes, just like many other people are, so I want to get your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below. Again, thank you all so much for watching. Thank you all so much for your time. If, of course, you guys love Dragon Ball and want to be kept up to date with everything involving Dragon Ball, the Dragon Ball Super Manga, the Dragon Ball Super Anime, Dragon Ball Super Fan Mangas, and many other inclusions from the Dragon Ball IP, then I do encourage you guys to hit that subscribe button and turn on all notifications by clicking on the bell icon to never miss a single update video on the channel give this video a big fat thumbs up by slapping that like button down below if you guys are simply stoked ready and excited to see what's about to happen next tune back in for more and i'll be seeing each and every single one of you guys down in the comment section below have a great day everybody and take care Peace! And a quick little reminder before you exit the video, if you guys are unaware, follow me on my secondary channels which are also used to discuss and talk about all kinds of different subjects and topics including gaming and live streams beginning with Unreal Network which is a channel dedicated in discussing all kinds of movies, breakdowns, current events, scary stories, theories, and more. So if you are someone who is into the entertainment world then that's the channel for you, so head on over and subscribe over on Unreal Network which up next is Unreal Vlogs where I bring you guys a little closer into my life and taking you behind the scenes with vlogging content, parody videos, reactions, motivational videos, uplifting videos, and more. So if you want to get to know me on more of a personal level, then that's the channel for you. Hit that subscribe button to always be in the loop with Unreal Vlogs. And lastly, my gaming channel, Unreal Royale, where on that channel we dive more into the world of gaming, ranging from all different kinds of video games, from Dragon Ball to Resident Evil to Grand Theft Auto, Halo, Gears of War, Minecraft, all kinds of horror games, shooters, RPGs, and more including live streams so if you're a gamer and are into the gaming world then smash that subscribe button over at Unreal Royale and experience the ride with me I want to thank you all so much for your time thank you all so very much for your support and I'll be seeing each and every single one of you in the next video this is the galactic emperor of the universe and of course I'm here to tell you to subscribe to Unrelent Gaming also follow Unrelent Gaming on these social media platforms to stay connected at all times and if you don't then very soon you will all be dead! <laughs> oh, did someone say unrelent gaming? Oh my god! The fuck's up, on? Put on some clothes! Well, why don't you put on any clothes? What? I don't need clothes! But, uh, Jesus Christ, that's huge! <laughs> what, Broly? Freezer. Uh oh. Prepare to die! <laughs> <laughs> that I'm the biggest Unreal Engine gaming fan. This is my moment. I'm a part of his notification squad. Universe 7 can have all the fun. I just want the food. And don't forget to leave a comment on this video. Show some love for the best community on YouTube. <laughs> Kakarot!